your obstacle or challenge as that. Think of it as the only path forward. So just take a moment, think about whatever challenge or obstacle might be in your life. Right now, there are a lot. There's some really obvious ones, but maybe some of the less obvious ones that are holding you back. And what we're gonna to do today is I'm gonna work on a couple of arm balances, but we're gonna break them into pieces and work on all the little components that make the arm balance happen eventually. So even if you don't get into the arm balance, um, don't worry about it. You're gonna be working on the little pieces that make that arm balance happen someday. So that's that path forward. The obstacle might be the arm balance and the path forward is learning how to uh, consider it the different aspects of it. So some of the things I want you to think about is when you're moving, notice uh, what you don't want to do in the arm balance or in the harder postures, like what is challenging, what is getting in your brain and you're thinking to yourself, I can't do this. Um, but the there's this opposite thing that also happens when you take the resting poses and the still poses, often your mind has a hard time staying there too. So we're just going to play with that in terms of how our brain messes with us sometimes. So we're gonna go ahead and start simple, just with a few sun salutations, and then we'll move toward hips and core. And the core we're gonna spend a little bit of time on just so that we can get the twists in there and make the arm balance a little bit more accessible. So, all right, let's do this. Okay, so come on up to the top of your mat and make sure you have a couple blocks up there and a strap. And again, you don't necessarily have to have yoga blocks. It can be books. It can be a belt. Uh, but if you're a little tight, these are really good uh, to have here. So you're going to take your feet about hips distance apart, spread the toes out, lift them up, place them back down. And then we're going to go for a side stretch first. Take the arms up on the inhale. Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Lift up tall and stretch over to your right hand side. And then find your breathing. Breathe into the back of your rib cage and breathe into your side of the rib cage. Notice where your tight spots are and breathe into them. And I'm going to move forward, but keep going to the right as you stretch. And then bend your knees a little bit. You're going to cross your left leg behind your right leg and keep stretching to your right. So you're just trying to get a little bit more into that left side. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Find a spot about five feet in front of you to focus on. Make sure your jaw feels relaxed. All right, come on up on the inhale and grab your right wrist with your left hand. Lift up tall and stretch over to your left hand side. Let your head rest on your left arm. Grab the ground with your feet. So pull the feet toward each other. Pull the balls of the feet and the heels of the feet toward each other. Squeeze your legs into the midline. Bend the knees a little bit. You're going to cross the right leg behind the left leg. Keep stretching to your left. Find a spot about five feet in front of you to focus on. All right, and then come on up on the inhale and release the arms to the sides. Shake them out a little bit. You might even want to be doing big, exaggerated shoulder rolls both directions. Arms up can create a little bit of tension in the shoulders. And then let's go for our first sun salutation. So take the arms up on the inhale, look up toward the thumbs. Exhale, fold and bend. Inhale, stretch forward, lengthen your spine, stick your tailbone out. Exhale, plant the hands, step back to a plank. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down halfway, so shoulders shouldn't go below the elbows. And then inhale to the tops of the feet, knees can be down or up, your choice. Drop the shoulders down your back, look up a little bit. And then exhale, downward dog. Once you're in down dog, walk it out a little bit. Press one heel down, press the other heel down. Just notice where you're feeling tight. It may be the Achilles tendons, it may be the backs of the calves, it may even be in the hamstrings behind the thighs. So check in, see where you're tight. You may need to bend your knees a little bit. Zip up the belly, pull the front ribs in. Relax the neck, shake out your head a little bit, nod your head a little bit. 
All right, take a moment here and come into child's pose. So we're gonna start amping this up a little bit, but just take a moment, rest in child's pose and check in with yourself, see how you feel. We're gonna press forward into the mat with your fingertips so that your hips come closer to your heels. Zip up your low belly. And notice if your mind wants to wander. Focus on your breath, stay here in the present. All right, look up, spread your fingers out nice and wide, flip your toes over, find a downward dog. And look up, inhale, step forward. Exhale, hinge up the hips. Inhale, take it up to the sky. And exhale, arms to the sides. Let's do this again. Take the arms up on the inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch out your spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down. If you always drop your knees to lower down. Inhale onto the tops of the feet. Again, knees can be down or up. Press into your toenails. And then exhale, downward dog. Walk it out a little bit. Press one heel toward the ground. Press the other heel toward the ground. All right, so this is an option here. Play with it. See how you feel about it. You're going to press down into your right hand and take your left hand to your right thigh, right calf, or right ankle, whatever you can grab. And then look under your right armpit and pull gently on your leg. So if you can only stay here for a little bit, that's okay. If you can't even get that left hand off the ground, that's what you want to work on is just slowly lifting that left hand off the ground and bringing it back. So you're slowly bringing some more strengthening to that right arm. Let's go to the other side. Bring your left hand to the ground. And then again, if you're pretty weak in the wrist or arm or shoulder, just kind of play with bringing your right hand off the ground. Otherwise, grab any part of your left leg with your right hand. And then once you've grabbed, pull gently and look under the left armpit. And release that right hand. Look up, inhale, step forward. Exhale, hinge the hips. Inhale, take it to the sky. And then exhale, arms to the side. So we're going to do Sun Salutation B. And Sun Salutation B, we're going to hold the Utkatasana for a little bit longer, make it a little bit more of a challenge. So it's a lot of back muscle, which is why it's difficult. Most of us are underdeveloped on our back. So big toes together, heels slightly apart. If that feels really uncomfortable with your big toes touching, you can separate your feet a little bit. Just make sure your knees line up with your middle three toes so they're not bowing in. So from here, big toes together, knees squeezing in, interlace the fingers, press the palms, the hands forward, and sink back. Big breathing here. Reach your hips back, zip up your low belly. So we're kind of taking a lot of the shoulder and back out of this right now by pressing forward and really focusing on the thighs. And then we're going to do this again and get a little bit more back into it. So inhale, come on up. Exhale, take the arms to the sides. Okay, so now we're going to try to touch the ground with the fingertips. Sink down. Try to touch the ground with your fingertips. So you're down possibly a little bit deeper than before. And then take the arms straight up toward the sky. And you may find your arms are way in front of your face. So the next thing you want to do is gently pull your arms back and see if you can line them up a little bit more with your ears, which is pretty tough to do. And then if you can get the palms of your hands together and keep your shoulders down away from your ears, try for it. But if your shoulders are starting to rise up around your ears, separate your arms again. Take about two more big breaths here. All right, inhale, take it up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart center. Take a moment, just notice how you feel. Couple deep breaths. All right, we're gonna do this one more time with a twist. So, bring your hands into your heart center. Sink down, try to touch the ground. Take the arms up toward the sky, big inhale. And then exhale, twist to your right and hook that left arm to the outside of your right leg. 
So from here, breathe deeply. Look over your right shoulder. Your left knee might be swinging forward pretty in a pretty exaggerated way. So if it is, tack that left hip back. Try to keep your knees a little bit more lined up. Don't forget to breathe. All right, inhale, come on up. Let's go for the other side. Exhale, sink down. Twist to your left. Tuck that right arm to the outside of your left leg. Tack your right hip back a little bit. Make sure you're breathing. All right, inhale, come on up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step back. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down halfway. Tap the feet, inhale. Exhale, downward dog. So you can stay in down dog or take a child's pose again. Either way, stay with your breath, stay with your body, don't let your mind wander. And then we're going to come into our warrior one and warrior two. All right, flip your toes over, find a downward dog. Your left heel is going to pivot forward, your right leg is going to lunge forward. So bring that right knee to your chest, lunge it forward, take your time. Drop your back heel to the ground so your left foot's at about a 45 degree angle, and then come up for warrior one. Pull the front ribs in. In fact, there's a little bit of a tendency here because that back leg is stretching back for your butt to stick out and your hips to tilt forward. So you want to lift your front hip creases up a little bit so you feel that left buttock doing a little bit more work. So keep lifting your front hip creases up. Drop your shoulders, look up towards your thumbs. Maybe bring the palms of the hands together. All right, exhale, take the hands down the ground. Step your right leg back. Press forward, lift your chin. Lower down halfway, drop your knees if you need to. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left leg lunges. Big inhale as you take it forward. Come on up. Lift your front hip points. Press into the outer edge of your back foot. Drop your shoulders a little bit. And big exhale. Take the hands down to the ground. Step your left leg back. Press forward. Lift your chin lower down. Inhale. Up dog. Maybe the knees are off the ground. Exhale. Down dog. Again, you can take a child's pose here or stay in down dog. If you happen to be in down dog, lift your armpits up and roll your shoulders onto your back. Relax the neck a little bit. All right, look up, inhale, step forward, big toes touching. Exhale, fold. Sink your hips down, come into Utkatasana, first pose. Exhale, straighten the legs. Arms to the sides. All right, we're going to add in a warrior two. Take the arms up on the inhale, sit back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step back. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down. Inhale, top to the feet. Exhale, downward dog. Left heel plants, right foot lunges. Warrior one on the inhale, and then open up for warrior two. All right, so once you're in warrior two, check your front knee. Make sure it's right over your ankle, roughly over the ankle. Just make sure it's not way in front. You should be able to see your toes when you look down. And then drop your shoulders. Lift your triceps. Keep dropping your shoulders. Look straight down your middle right finger. Your drishti or focal point is your middle right finger. All right, then lay your hands down to the ground. Step your right leg back. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left leg lunges. Big inhale, take it up. 
and then open up for warrior two. So again, left foot lines up roughly with the heel arch of your back foot. Left knee is roughly over your ankle. You should be able to see your big toe when you look down. Drop the shoulders a little bit. And this time, change up your hands, pull your fingers and thumbs back towards your face and press out through the heels of your hands as if there are two walls coming toward you and you're pushing the walls away with your hands. Keep dropping the shoulders. And pin one of your hands down to the ground. Step your left leg back. Try to lift it and step it rather than dragging it. Press forward, lift your chin, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Let's try this again. Right leg lunges forward. Big inhale, come on up. Open up for warrior two. Turn the palm of the right hand toward the sky, come into exalted warrior. So left leg is lifting up to meet the left hand. Try not to push down really hard with your left hand. Sink into that front leg a little bit more. Make sure it's got a nice bend in the knee. Bring your right hand to the back of your head and push your head back into your hand. So you're getting a tiny little back bend here. And exhale, take the hands down to the ground. Step your right leg back. Press forward, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Left leg lunges. Big inhale, take it up. And then open it for warrior two. And then turn the left hand toward the sky, palm of the hand toward the sky, and come into exalted warrior. So again, right leg is lifting up toward the right hand. Make sure that left knee is nice and bent over the ankle. Then bring that left hand to the back of your head and push your head back into your hand a little bit just to open up the chest and shoulders. All right, and then pin well down to the ground. Step your left leg back, press forward, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take five breaths here. Child's pose is also a great option. So if you need a little bit more of a break, hang out in child's pose. Find your breath, big inhales, big exhales. Notice if your breath is not as strong as it could be if you're wandering off and not paying attention. All right, look up at your hands. Big inhale, turn this into a down dog if you weren't already there, and step forward. Big chest touching, exhale, fold. Sink into Utkatasana, drop your hips, take your arms up. Exhale, straighten the legs, arms the sides. All right, let's do a regular forward bend. So I'm gonna make this look really easy because I have looser hamstrings from many years of practice. So if your hamstrings are not as loose, what you're gonna preference is a long spine. So your feet are about hips distance apart, hands around the hips, lift your heart on the inhale. Exhale, fold, and a good place to start is just at a roughly parallel here. And if you're already starting to feel tugging on the backs of the legs and the knees, bend the knees generously, you're still gonna get a great hamstring stretch. So this is where blocks can be really handy. If you're feeling super tight in the backs of the legs, get your blocks out in front of you. You can also use like a chair or a wall. And then as you inhale, Lengthen your heart forward and your tailbone back. Zip up the belly. And then exhale, relax a little bit. And just see if your hips will hinge a little bit more as they relax. And then inhale, lengthen again. And then exhale, relax. So if you happen to be on a little, slightly more flexible side, maybe your hands are on the ground. And then if you happen to be a little bit more flexible than that, make sure your spine stays long, your chin is up but you can grab your big toes with your first two fingers. You kind of wrap your fingers around your big toes. Inhale, reach your heart forward and your tailbone back. Exhale, relax, see if you can keep your spine long and just hinge at the hips. Inhale, lengthen, draw your shoulder blades down your back towards your hips. Exhale, relax. Three more of these. Again, remember, you can have really bent legs and still get the same effect. 
Inhale, lengthening. Exhale, relaxing. Inhale, lengthening. And exhale, relaxing. Okay, we're going to try to go a little deeper. If you happen to be really tight in the hamstrings, you're going to bend your knees even more generously. So you're going to take your hands and slip them under your feet. So your fingers are pointing back towards your heels and you're stepping on the palms of your hands. And again, you're still going for a long, flat back, so bend your knees as much as you can. You want to make sure you're not rounding here through the upper back and middle back. So as you inhale, reach your heart forward, lift your chin, reach your collarbones forward, reach your tailbone back, maybe straighten the legs a tiny bit. And then exhale, relax again. Four more. Inhale, lengthen. Press your feet down and lift your hands up so you can pull those arm bones into your shoulder sockets. Exhale, relax. Three more. One more. Take those hands to the hips, squeeze your elbows toward the sky, bend the knees, big inhale, come all the way up to the sky. All right, we're going to add in one more step into our sun salutation B, so put your big toes together, heels slightly apart, take the arms up on the inhale and sit back into Utkatasana, exhale, fold, inhale, stretch forward, exhale, step back, press forward, lift your chin, lower down. Taps the feet, inhale, exhale, downward dog. Left heel pivots and plants, right foot lunges forward. Warrior one on the inhale, warrior two on the exhale. Inhale, exalted warrior. And then bring your hands together, come back to warrior two with your torso upright. You bring your hands together, clasp the hands together. So if you're tight in the shoulders, you're probably gonna have bent elbows. Gently stretch your fist down, but allow your elbows to be bent. And then we're gonna do a little forward bend here. Right shoulder is gonna to come toward the right knee. It might come to the inside of the right knee and you might be able to lift your arms up. Don't feel like you have to lift your arms up. If you have your fist a little bit closer to your hips, just keep trying to roll your shoulders onto your back. This can feel like a pretty huge shoulder opener. So play with it, see where you wanna go, but don't force it. All right, take your hands to the ground on either side of your right foot. We're gonna do a gentle side plank here. Left hand to the ground below your left shoulder. Turn your left toes forward, and then walk your right foot off the mat so that your right foot's pointing to about three o'clock, and then turn your left foot so you're on the pinky edge of your left foot, and then take your right arm toward the sky. And we're gonna do this variation here, get a little bit more side stretch. So slowly drop your left hip and drop your right arm. So you're getting a little bit of a stretch here through this left side. And then as you inhale, you're gonna push into the right foot and lift your hip up and stretch your right arm next to your ear toward the top of your mat. Let's do five more of these. Exhale, sink down. And then inhale, come back up. And then exhale, sink down. Claw the ground a little bit with your left hand. And then inhale, come on up. Two more, exhale, sink down. Inhale, come on up. And exhale, sink down. And inhale, come on up. All right, bring that right hand back down the ground, down dog. Or if you need a little break on that left wrist, take a child's pose. Breathe deeply and stay here with your breath. All right, let's go for the other side. So find your down dog, lunge your left leg forward, big inhale, come on up, warrior one. Open up, warrior two. Inhale, exalted warrior. Exhale, come back through to the center. Clasp your hands together behind your back, put the other thumb and first finger on top. So it's gonna be your non-dominant grip. And again, shoulders can be bent, or elbows can be bent, shoulders can drop down. And then from here, so you can get that left shoulder to the inside of your left leg. Maybe lift the arms up. Don't feel like they have to come up. Zip up your low belly. 
Don't forget to breathe. Keep a nice bend in that left knee. Zip up the low belly again. Don't forget to breathe. Nice. All right, bring your hands down to the ground. Walk your left foot off the mat. Start turning your right toes forward. Now come to the pinky edge of your right foot. Take your left arm toward the sky. From here, take a big inhale. Exhale, drop your right hip and drop your left arm. Take a moment here, get that right shoulder onto your back. Feel that stretch through the right hand side. And then inhale, lift, push the left foot and the pinky edge of your right foot. Take that left arm next to your ear. Exhale, come on down. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, come down. Three more of these. Last one. All right. Bring the left hand back down. And then down dog. Again, if you need a little break with the wrists, find a child's pose. Deep breaths. Don't let your brain wander off. And if that was a whole lot for the wrist, if you feel like your wrists are just aching now, you can take a moment, sit back, take your left thumb across the inside of your right wrist, where you have nine ligaments that come through your wrist, press down hard, and you can shake out your wrist a little bit. And then go for the other side. Take your right thumb, press down on the inside of your wrist, press down hard, and then shake it up. That'll give you a little bit of relief if you tend to have tight wrists or weak wrists. All right, let's add a little bit of twisting here. So we're going to come into warrior sun salutation seat. So find your downward dog. Look up. Inhale. Step forward. Big toes touching. Exhale. Fold. Sink into Utkatasana. Take the arms up. Big inhale. Big exhale. And inhale. Come on up. Exhale. Arms to the sides. All right, sun salutation seat. So a little bit more sagittal plane. Lunges, hamstrings, and quadriceps. Take the arms up on the inhale, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. Drop your back knee. Take the arms up on the inhale. So a little bit of a back bend here. And zip up your belly. Drag your right heel and your left knee toward each other, toward the midline, but allow your hips to grow heavy. And big exhale. Take the hands down to the ground. Step back. Lift your left leg toward the sky. Take a big inhale here. And then exhale, lunge your left leg forward. And drop your back knee. So take your time getting there. That could be a really hard one, pulling that left knee forward. And then take the arms up when you're ready. Let your hips drop. Drag your right knee and your left heel toward each other. All right, exhale, take the head down the ground, lift your back knee, step forward. Inhale, stretch your heart forward. Exhale, hinge the hips. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, step your right leg back. Drop your back knee. Take the arms up on the inhale. Drag to the midline. Pull the belly in, pull the front ribs in. Big exhale, hands to the ground, step back. Lift your right leg toward the sky. On your next exhale, lunge your right leg forward. Drop your back knee, come on up again. And big exhale, take the hands down the ground, lift that back knee up and step your left leg forward. Inhale, stretch your heart forward. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, arms to the sides. Okay, so this next one, this next twist is really important. The twist is what counts. 
As you get better at twists, then this Ekapada Kundinyasana will happen. So I'll show the arm balance, but what I'm more interested in is the twist. If you happen to have the strength for the arm balance or the twisting capacity, that's great, but we're gonna go into some basics a little bit later about how to get there someday. So take the arms up on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. All right, this is the important part. We're gonna be doing this twist here. So take your left arm up, stretch over to your right, and you can play with this a little bit so you can drop your hips, drag your feet toward each other, and possibly even reach down and try to touch the ground with your right fingers. You can also use a block here. So if you're not quite that flexible, push into a block as you stretch over to your left. So I'll show this from a different angle just so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm reaching over to my right hand side as I push my fingers into a block or into the ground. You wanna get this really nice big stretch here through the left side. As you do that, you're gonna to try to turn this into a slightly bigger twist. So from here, use that left twist, that side twist that you've already got going or that stretch. Bring that left arm to the outside of your right leg and then lift your rib cage up and pull it around a little bit and then bring your hands together. So now you're trying to hook that left elbow to the outside of your right leg, wherever you end up is fine. And then you're gonna lengthen your tailbone back and your heart forward. Then flip your back toes over and just see if you can push into the ball of your back foot and maybe lift that back knee. It's a bigger stretch through this IT band and outer right hip when you do that. So if you can't get your left knee off the ground yet, that's okay. That's just where that obstacle is. And you'll just breathe there until you can get through that. So big breathing. All right, plant your hands, step back, lift your left leg toward the sky, open up the hip, bend the knee, lift that left knee up higher and keep pressing your left heel toward your right glutes. And then keep your shoulders level, a little bit of a lift under that right armpit. All right, lunge the left leg forward, drop the back knee. We're gonna go for an open twist here. So right hand down below the right shoulder, turn your left toes out to the left a little bit, and then even peel your left foot off the mat so you're on the pinky edge of your left foot. Take your left hand to your thigh and look over your left shoulder. So you're opening up this twist here, and then open up the left shoulder by reaching back, and then roll your right shoulder onto your back as well. So this is a great place to hang out for a while. If you have slightly looser quadriceps, you can try to bend your right knee and eventually grab your left foot, or sorry, right foot, but make sure that you're breathing deeply here and you're not forcing anything. This can be a really tough posture getting this quadricep to loosen up a little bit more and reach back. So if you're not quite there, just think about getting those shoulders onto your back. All right, unwind, turn everything forward. Step your right leg forward. So lift your back knee up and then step forward. Inhale, stretch your heart forward. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, fold forward again. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, right leg back. Drop your back knee. Okay, so same thing. You may want to block over on the left side. We're going to go for a side stretch first. Right arm up, stretch over to your left. Drop your hips, maybe touch the ground with your fingertips or maybe use your block and push into your block. Maybe look up towards your right hand a little bit so you have a nice neutral curve in the back of your neck. All right, take that right arm to the outside of your left leg. Lift your belly up and your rib cage up, pull them around to the left a little bit. Bring your hands together, lengthen your spine, look over your left shoulder. This is fantastic, stay here if you feel like this is very challenging. If you cannot breathe, then you definitely don't wanna go any deeper. You wanna figure out how to breathe into your back and into your sides. If you wanna go a little bit deeper, flip your back toes over, see if you can push into them, get your knee off the ground. Eventually, your leg will go straight or straighter. Don't forget to breathe. Hands down to the ground, step back. Lift your right leg toward the sky. Open up the hip, bend the knee. 
And then work on that right hip. So left shoulder is going to lift. Shoulders are level. But keep trying to lift your right knee and press your right heel toward your left glutes. So you're trying to feel those outer right hip muscles doing some work lifting here. And just keep lifting through that left armpit. All right, look up, lunge your right leg forward, drop your back knee. All right, open twist. You're going to turn your right toes out to the right. Left hand under your left shoulder. Roll your shoulders onto your back and then reach your right arm back. So this is great. The twist is super important. As we try to get into these arm balances that I'm going to demonstrate, the twist is the most important part. So working on shoulders onto your back, twisting. If you can bend your back knee and grab your foot, fine. Don't forget to breathe. All right, unwind, turn everything forward, and step your left leg forward. Inhale, stretch your heart. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale, come all the way up. And exhale, relax. Okay, so we're going to do a couple standing poses, balancing poses. Then we're going to come back to the arm balance part, which I sort of hinted at. And then we're going to try to do sort of pseudo arm balances on our backs and work the core more. So you're going to spread your toes out on your left foot. Bend your left leg and cross your right ankle on top. And then see if you can stretch your right knee out to the side. Flexing the toes is a really good idea. So you can point or flex. The most important thing is that this ankle just stays straight. So from here, see if you can bend your standing leg a little bit more and hinge a little bit more and get a little bit more into this outer right hip. If you have any balancing issues, you put a hand on the wall or use your block. You've got two blocks. You can also use two blocks here. So big inhales, big exhales. If you're a little bit more flexible through the hamstrings, you can bring your fingertips to the ground. So lots of options here. Don't feel like you need to just suffer through this. Make sure that you're steady because we're really just building heat in the hips and doing essentially a pigeon while standing up. It does turn into an arm balance someday. We're going to skip that one today. We just want to get the hip to open up. You'll notice if you start getting a little bit bored here, the more you bend your standing leg, the more you're going to get into this outer hip. You can also play with it. If you happen to be a more flexible person, you can go for a straighter leg and try to bring your belly really close to your thigh. All right, let's go for the other side. So we're going to go onto the right leg now. Spread your toes out. Make a little bend in that right standing leg, so you're making a shelf. Crush your left ankle on top, and then slowly hinge. As you feel comfortable, you may want to bend that standing leg more, because that's going to make your left hip do more work. Keep breathing here. Take about two to three more big breaths. Deep, deep breathing. All right, come on out of this posture. And we're going to go for another standing posture just to get a little bit more into your balance. So you're going to spread your toes out on your left foot and lift your right knee up. So this is a great beginner variation here, especially if you have wobbly ankles. So you're just grabbing the front of your shin. You can put your hand up on a wall if you need to, or your hand can be on your hip. If you feel like you want to go a little deeper with this, you can grab your big toe and start trying to extend. It may not be a full extension. You can also use your strap here. So I'll just demonstrate with the strap. But keep in mind, bent leg is just as good as straight leg. It depends on what your obstacle is, what you're working on. And it may be just getting a stronger ankle. So this is an option as well. The main thing is you don't want to look like you're water skiing. So if you're starting to feel like you're leaning back, press your left thigh muscle back into the thigh bone and lift your chest. Try to stay upright so you're using more of your core muscles here. And you really should be feeling this in your outer left hip and your left thigh. 
So now take your knee or your leg out to the side. I'll change direction here just so you can see what I'm doing. So you take your knee or leg out to the side. Again, knee is fine, especially if balance is your challenge. Don't forget to breathe. Maybe you look over your left shoulder if you're feeling like your balance is pretty good. All right, bring your leg back to the front or knee back to the front. You're going to switch hands. So your left hand is going to come to the outside of your right thigh if you have a bent knee, or you're going to grab the strap of the foot, take your right arm back behind you. So a little bit of a twist here. Keep pressing your left thigh back. And then possibly, if your balance feels good, look over the right shoulder. Take a couple of breaths to do that. You'll notice a lot is happening in the hips, and that is exactly what we're trying to target. All right, coming out of that, let's go through the other side. Spread your toes out on your right foot. Bring your left knee up. Again, left knee is fine. You can just grab the front of the shin. If you feel it challenging yourself more, put your strap around the foot or grab your big toe and then extend a little bit. It doesn't have to go totally straight. Press your right thigh back. Lift your heart. And you want to bring your chest slightly forward so you're not water skiing and leaning backward. And then... Breathe deeply, soften your jaw. All right, take your knee or your leg out to the left. Keep pressing your right thigh back as you start feeling your outer right hip engaging a little bit more to stabilize you. Possibly look over your right shoulder. All right, bring it back to the front. Bring your right hand to the outside of your left thigh or grab your foot or strap. Take your left arm behind you. Don't forget to breathe. And then possibly look over your left shoulder if you feel like your balance is good. So this is Ekapada Kundinyasana, but standing up. And I'll show you the arm balance in a second. All right, and then let that one go. All right, so we're going to try for our twist again and maybe get our hands to the ground and maybe get into the arm balance, but then we're going to try a whole different way to approach it on our backs. So take the arms up on the inhale and look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, stretch forward. Exhale, step your left leg back. All right, take that left arm up, stretch over to your right. So this should look familiar. And then you're going to twist. Take that left arm to the outside of the right leg. Lift your belly up. Pull it around a little bit. All right, so the next part is how do I get my hands to the floor? When you do bring your hands to the floor, if you bring your hands to the floor, your fingers, as long as they're pointing about the same direction and roughly shoulder distance apart, it doesn't matter if they're pointing forward or to the sides. You pick. So the left arm is connected to the outside of my right leg, and that's what I'm trying to maintain is that connection between left arm and right leg. So you can kind of lean back a little bit, bring one hand to the ground. My left arm is still connected to my right leg. And then kind of tip over a little bit, bring that right hand to the ground. Stage one is getting your spine long. Reach your heart forward and your tailbone back. Stage two is flipping your back toes over and trying to get your back knee up. That's where most people get stuck, and that's okay because it's pretty big. So breathe here. If you're feeling pretty comfortable, then you can bend that left arm a little bit and make a shelf for your right leg to rest on top of. Come forward. And then back leg lift after the right leg lifts. So kind of play with that. See where you are. If you can't do it, it's not a big deal. We're going to play with it on the back. Nice. All right. Two, three more big breaths. Just play with it wherever you are. Don't feel like you have to be in a full-blown arm balance. If you're here and you're like, whoo, this is huge. I'm hanging out here. This is great. If you can get to the ground. That's the next big step. So keep lengthening your spine. Okay, let's go for the other side. So take a moment to take a child's pose just in case your wrist got a little tired. Breathe deeply. Notice the changes here. Did you feel something happening in your core, in your belly, in your sides? Are there changes now? Does it feel different?
Now let's go for the other side. So from here, left leg lunges forward. We're gonna go for the side stretch on the left side. Take the right arm up, stretch over to your left. Get that nice big lengthening happening through the right side. Look up towards your right hand. Breathe. All right, take that right arm to the outside of your left leg. Lift your rib cage up, twist it to the left a little bit more. Take a moment and twist, and that can be super challenging. If that's feeling okay, then see if you can keep that connection between your right arm and your left leg. See if you can get your right hand to the ground and then your left hand to the ground. Again, about shoulder distance apart. And then you're gonna bend your right arm, make sure that you're trying to make a shelf. See if you can lift your back knee. And again, this is where most people get stuck and this is a great place to get stuck. So breathing here and working through the hips and the core. If it seems appropriate, lift your chin more and see if you can get your left leg up more. And then you're gonna come forward slightly and then see if you can get that right leg up as well. That right leg might not come up. That is the hardest part is getting that right leg up. So again, the twist is fine. Just hanging out and trying to get your back knee up is fine. I'll demonstrate from a slightly different angle. Take about four or five more big breaths here, just kind of trying. So right arm to the outside of the left leg, back leg straightens, right arm bends, and you kind of hang. And maybe that back leg comes up. This is Ekapada Kundinyasana. Nice, okay. Now we're gonna do this on our backs and just kind of work those core muscles. So no more wrist stuff for this particular posture. So you're gonna lie on your back, Take your legs up and then bend them so that your shins are roughly parallel to the ground. Then you can bring your hands to your thighs, push your hands into your thighs and resist and pull your thighs back towards your hands. Create some isometric resistance here. You will notice that your low back curls a little bit and that your low back is no longer pressed against the ground and that's good. Now press your middle back against the ground. Keep pressing your hands into your thighs and pulling your thighs in towards your hands. So you start feeling that lengthening happening through that deep core. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of twisting here. So take your arms out to the sides and you can make little saguaro cactus arms here. So nice 90 degree angle in the arms and the elbows. And then you can go for straight legs or bent legs. I highly recommend bent legs until you start feeling really comfortable. It's still tough. So what you're going to do is pull the knees in. If you're going for straight legs, pull the legs in. And then you're going to lower down about 30 degrees to your left. And then and once you're here, you have to fix your low back here because your low back starts getting really flattened out and your butt starts tucking under, which is not really good for your low back. So you want to make sure there's a little bit of a natural curve in your low back. So take a moment and roll, kind of lift the hips up and roll onto your outer left hip. And then stick your tailbone out so you have a nice little curve in your back. And that means you're gonna be working more of your abdominals and core and of the back muscles, it's not gonna be low back that's working so hard. So from here, press your left elbow into the ground and see if you can lower your knees or your legs a little bit more. Now we're not going for super depth here. I mean, if you can get all the way down feet into your left hand, that's fine. What we're going for is what you can maintain. So you squeeze that bottom leg up into the top leg, stick your tailbone out, wrap your left belly toward your right belly. Breathe deeply, and if you wanna go a little deeper, see if you can bring your knees a little bit more toward your left elbow, or see if you can lower a tiny bit more. The eventual goal is feet land in the hand someday, but that is the eventual goal. So no worries about whether you achieve it today, just make sure you can breathe wherever you are. All right, come back up. Take a moment to put your feet on the ground. Walk your feet out to the sides of your mat and drop the knees in toward each other. And then we'll go for the other side. This twisting is the important part though. It's being able to maintain the twist in a strong position. So we'll go for the other side. So again, bent legs or straight legs, your choice. Elbows bent at about a 90 degree angle. Bring your knees in and then lower about 30 degrees to your right. 
but we need to get that low back to curve a little bit. So take a moment, lift your hips up and roll onto your outer right hip so you can stick your tailbone out and get a little curve in your low back. And then you can stay here or you can go slightly lower. Keep lifting your bottom leg up into your top leg. Or you can bring your feet and knees in a little bit closer to that right hand. Or a little bit of both. So keep breathing. Keep sticking your tailbone out. Wrap your right belly toward your left belly. Press your right elbow into the ground so that your left shoulder doesn't pop up. And as appropriate, see if you can lower your legs. But don't feel like you have to go full force into this one. Take about two more big breaths. All right, inhale, come on up. Bring your feet to the ground, walk them out to the wide sides of the mat, drop your knees in toward each other. All right, so the Ekapada Kundinyasana arm balance that we just did, we're gonna do this on our backs now. So there's a twist involved, and then you're gonna lift your shoulders off the ground. So take your legs up. Take your arms out to the sides. All right, now what you're gonna do is bend your right leg and you're gonna reach that left leg over. So you're gonna roll onto your outer right hip. Then lift your hips up and come onto your outer right hip a little bit more. Now extend your right leg. So a little bit of a twist, extended legs. You probably already feel some of your core engaging as you extend your left leg off to the right and your right leg down toward the bottom of your mat. Now you're gonna take your arms up, shoulders up, and reach and try to get your right elbow to your left knee. Someday it'll be even more. It'll be like the back of your arm closer to closer to your armpit. And like nice deep breaths here. So extend that right leg, reach up through the ball of your right foot. Keep breathing, see if you can get that right elbow and left leg, some outside of left leg, somewhat closer to each other. Shoulders off the bat. Don't forget to breathe. Still hard, right? We're not even doing an arm balance. All right, bring your right foot to the ground, shoulders down, left foot back down the ground, walk your feet out to the sides of the mat, drop your knees in toward each other. Take some big, deep, restorative breaths. All right, let's do the other one. So knees up, left knee down, right leg extends. Bring that right leg over. Take a moment and lift your hips up and come onto your outer left hip a little bit more. Then you're gonna extend that left leg a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Then take your hands as if you're doing an arm balance on the ceiling. Lift your shoulders up and extend out and try to get your left elbow to the outside of your right leg. See if you can touch your left elbow and your outer right knee and breathe. Nice, and come on down. Walk your feet out to the sides of your mat and drop your knees in toward each other. All right, I'm going to demonstrate Ashtabhakrasana, which is another fun arm balance, but you are not going to do Ashtabhakrasana unless you're just dying for it. Most of us are going to do this on our backs right now. So I'll demonstrate it real fast while you rest. So this can be really tough. You're going to lift your left leg up, take your left arm behind, bring your left hand to the ground. So my left elbow is bent. It's bent like this. And I rest my back of my left leg on the back of my arm and let it hang here on the back of the arm. So this is gonna be really tough. And then you're gonna take your right ankle and put it on top of your left ankle. So I put my right hand down, right ankle on top, and then I lean forward, push, 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 hips up, and then I go out to the side. Because that's so tough and because there's such a big twist in it, we're not gonna do that today. But we're gonna work on the core muscles that are involved in that. So lying on your back, nice big breaths, Hook your right ankle on top of your left ankle. Bend your knees a little bit, and then you're gonna take your left arm through the gap in your legs, and you're gonna press that left arm into your right leg and start rolling onto your left hip, outer left hip, and then get your shoulders off the ground. And you're gonna keep hooking that left arm against the inside of your right leg and keep lifting your shoulders off the ground. Nice 
and you may roll over onto your left side. So what you're trying to do is not roll over onto your left side right now. It's find some balance here. Let's go for the other side. Roll onto your back, hook your left ankle over your right ankle. A little bit of a bend in the knees, so you can reach through with that right arm. And hook that right arm against your left leg. And then you're going to start rolling onto your outer right hip and bring your legs over to the right, but they're hooked at the ankles there. And then you're going to lift your shoulders off the ground. Keep pressing your right arm in towards your inner left thigh. And breathe and keep the shoulders off the ground. So it's working all those core muscles that you desperately need when you're trying to do an arm balance. And that cross body twist is super important. All right, release your head and shoulders, drop your feet, walk your feet out to the sides of your mat, drop your knees in toward each other, take some deep, deep breaths here. All right, let's get a little bit of a stretch through the front of the hips psoas area because we did some core that tends to tighten up the psoas. So keep your feet on the sides of your mat. You're going to drop your knees over to the right, like windshield wipers dropping to the right. And then you're going to take your right leg and place your right ankle on top of your outer left thigh near the knee. You can either apply a little bit of pressure or just let gravity do the work and then take the arms out to the sides and look over the left shoulder. And I will demonstrate from a slightly different angle. So that right ankle is on top of the outer left thigh near the knee. All right, release that right foot, bring your feet to the outer edges of the mat. Now you're going to drop your knees like windshield wipers over to the left side. Take your left ankle, place it on the outer right knee, outer right thigh near the knee. And you could apply pressure if you want to. And then look over your right shoulder. All right, and then release. And then let's do a happy baby dead look. So grab your big toes or the outsides of your feet. Rock from side to side a little bit. Let's go for another pigeon, this time on our backs. So bring your feet to the ground. Cross your right ankle just below your left knee on the thigh. Bring that left leg in, take your right arm through the gap in your legs, grab the back of your thigh or the front of your shin, gently pull the left leg in, but also resist a little bit with the left leg, and then rock from side to side so you can get into the different tight spots in your hip. All right, so this is great for most people, and what I want you to do is try to roll your tailbone toward the ground and get a little bit of a curve in your low back so that your low back is not pressing into the ground. So you're using a little bit more core muscle here as you try to get that curve in your back. If you want to go a little further, you can. So if you're feeling like your hip is on the looser side this morning, you can hook your right arm under your leg near the knee. And a lot of people do okay with that part. The hard part is hooking your left elbow under the leg near the ankle. So not everybody can grab, can get the, the elbow underneath. If you can't, you can just grab your foot with your left hand. So head and shoulders are down, and you're essentially trying to pull the shin in a little bit closer to your chest. Keep your ankle nice and straight, so you're either pointing or flexing. Rock from side to side a little bit, and again, you might be grabbing your right foot with your left hand rather than hooking the elbow under the leg near the ankle. And then, so I'll just sort of demonstrate here from a slightly different angle. So right arm underneath, left foot either grabs, or maybe it comes underneath also and then try to get your shoulders to relax toward the ground. If you're really flexible in the hips, and there are always a few who are, 
Then you can hook your left elbow around the bottom of your right foot and your right elbow around your knee and just hug that shin in close to your chest. That's if you're flexible. You can also keep the knee, left knee bent or extend the left leg. So those are some other options to just make it a little bit more challenging if you want to. And then rocking from side to side is great. So don't make this a static pose. Make sure you're moving gently in the pose. This is great if you have low back pain, uh, sciatica, hip pain, a lot of the times this is what we're dealing with is just tight outer butt muscles and also some tightness a little bit closer in there where the piriformis is. So breathe deeply. This is a posture you should do every day. All right, let's go for the other side. So right foot on the ground, left ankle crosses just below the right knee on the thigh. Then take that left arm through the gap in your legs, grab the back of your right thigh or the front of your right shin, pull that right leg in gently and resist a little bit. So the right leg is pushing away as you pull in. Rock from side to side, try to roll your tailbone toward the ground so you're getting a little bit of a bubble of air under your low back. Try not to press your low back flat into the ground. It's not bad for your low back to press flat into the ground, so you're not doing damage, but you're not using the correct core muscles in terms of trying to create strength and length in your low back. So try to roll your tailbone toward the ground. So you're using those deeper lower belly muscles and back muscles. That low back QL loves to get stretched out in a proper way with a nice natural curve in the back. All right, see if you can go deeper. Don't feel like you have to. So if this is a really tough one here. If you're a right-hander, this left hip tends to be tighter. So if you're hanging out here and you're like, Ooh, you, you, I can't go any deeper, then stay with this and breathe into it. You may go a little bit deeper in a bit. So if deeper seems viable, take that left elbow and hook it under the leg near the knee. Grab onto your foot, or if you think you can get that right elbow underneath the leg near the ankle, go for it. And then see if you can drop your shoulders to the ground. And then the next step slowly is maybe bring your right foot to the ground. You can kind of just rock from side to side and breathe. These breaths are super important. The hip muscles are oxygen hogs. They suck so much oxygen out every single time. So when you're breathing in, really breathe in, get as much oxygen as you can because the hip muscles will take all of it. And what will happen is you'll start yawning or something else will cramp up because you're not breathing deeply enough. So get that inhale in there. Make sure it's really, really big. Exhale should be pretty big too. All right, possibly, possibly hook your right elbow around the bottom of your left foot and your left elbow around your knee. You can even extend your leg. So if you're kind of hooking under the leg still, you can still try to extend the leg and see what happens. You can always back off and come back to something a little bit more simple. Remember to breathe, rock from side to side. Keep those big inhales and big exhales, bigger exhales. and gently come out of that posture. Take your knees or your feet out to the sides of your mat again and drop your knees in toward each other. Don't let your mind wander. Keep your, fight, your uh, thoughts on your breath. All right, let's do a little bit of back strengthening. So we're going to flip over onto our bellies and do a couple Shadavasanas. So from here, take the hands back behind you, the palms of the hands on the ground. And then you're going to start with your forehead on the ground. Extend your leg. You may even want to lift the leg up, stretch it out, place it back down. Lift the other leg up, stretch it out, place it back down. And then lift your chest, press your palms of your hands into the ground, and press your toes into the ground. Roll your pubic bone toward the ground. And then lift your chest up a little bit more and lift your arms up behind you.
All right, now take the arms out to the sides, and then make cactus arms, so bend the elbows backwards, fingers gonna point forward, lift your arms up a little bit more. Now lift your legs up. Now squeeze your ankles together. All right, make a little pillow with your hands, turn your head to one side, and rest for a moment. Okay, so we're going to do a side plank on each side, and we're going to try to hold the side plank for a minute, which is actually a really long time. A minute can seem eternal. So if you need to come down and rest, that's okay. Um, and a minute since I don't have a ticking clock right in front of me, it's about 20 breaths, 15 to 20 breaths, depending on how deeply you breathe. So you're gonna come onto one side, and then make sure your right hand is pointing forward toward the long side of your mat. So you can start on either side, we're gonna do both. So my right forearm is on the ground, my right hand is pointing forward toward the long side of my mat. I'm gonna extend my legs out, and then I'm gonna to try to lift my hips up off the ground. If you get a little tired, you can always put a block here. And you can kind of press into the block with this top hand as well. So we're going to try to do 20 breaths. If you have to take a break and bring your hips back down, that's fine. You're getting a nice stretch through the side anyway. So go ahead and lift your hip up off the ground. Bring your left hand to your thigh or hip. You can even kind of play with this. Take an arm up or over your head and breathe deeply. Five more breaths. All right, hips down. Take a moment to roll onto your back. Just take a moment, walk your feet out to the sides, let your knees drop in toward each other. Big breaths. Remember, the obstacle is the path. So keep that in mind. If you need to take a break, that is okay. So come onto your left forearm now. So your left fingers are going to be pointing toward the long side of your mat. And you're going to extend your legs. And from here, press into that left forearm and lift your hips up and breathe deeply. Take breaks if you need to. About halfway there. Four more breaths. And drop the hips. Roll onto your back. Let's do a happy baby this time. Grab your big toes. Rock from side to side. Drop the shoulders. Breathe deeply. Make sure you've got some big exhales happening. All right, let's come into a little shoulder opener just in case your shoulders felt like they tightened up there. So you're going to roll onto your belly and come over onto the right side of your mat. You want your block up here, so make sure you have your block up by your head. Then you're going to take your left arm straight out to the left. So if your head is going to 12 o'clock, your left arm is going to 9 o'clock. 
Then you're gonna drop your left arm a little bit closer to your leg, so somewhere between nine o'clock to six o'clock. Bend your right knee, plant your right hand, push into the right hand and roll onto your left side. Then take your block and slide it under your head so you don't have eight to 11 pounds of head hanging off the top of your neck. This is great, so you're opening up your left shoulder, flip your left hand over so the palm of your hand is facing the ceiling. You can start with your right hand on your hip and plenty of people are super tight in the shoulders here, especially if you have shoulder impingement. If you have do a lot of weightlifting, often you have some real tightness in the inside area of your rotator cuff. So this is a great place to just stretch out those pecs and stretch out that, that part, the front part of your rotator cuff. If you want to go a little deeper, then maybe put your left foot on the ground and point both knees up toward the ceiling. So you're creating a little bit of a twist. And then you may want to take your right hand back behind you and see if you can grab your left hand with your right hand. The other option that may be available to you if you happen to be pretty twisty and your left shoulder is pretty open, you may be able to drop your right hip to the ground so that both glutes, both butt cheeks are basically on the ground. It may not happen. Don't try to force it because this is obviously a shoulder stretch first. So big inhales, big exhales. And then whatever tightness came into your shoulders from those side planks, this will go away. It's a nice way to relax afterward. All right, unwind. Let's go to the other side. So you're going to slide over to the left side of your mat. Take your right arm straight out to 3 o'clock, but then you're going to slide down a little bit more, somewhere between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. Bend your left leg. Place your left hand on the ground and press down. Roll onto your right hip. Slide your block under your head. Put your left foot flat on the ground. This is great. Left hand can come to your hip. Flip your right hand over so the palm of your hand is facing the ceiling. And then possibly reach back and grab your right hand with your left hand. That's optional. Take some deep breaths here. If you feel like you are not getting enough of a challenge, you may want to put your right foot on the ground and point both knees toward the ceiling and say maybe someday that left hip will drop down as well to the ground, but don't try to force anything, just see what happens. Make sure you can breathe. If your shoulder or arm falls asleep, come out of the posture, give yourself a little breather and then start over again. There's a lot going on in the rotator cuff and often Sometimes you just get into it weird, and sometimes you're so tight that you just need to take a break and come out of it. All right, unwind, and push back to child's pose. You just notice how your shoulders feel. All right, and then from here, let's go ahead and line our backs. So when you're ready, line your back, you can go for a regular Shavasana that is lovely, hanging out here and just getting the shoulders underneath you, squeezing them together and sinking down, press your low back in the ground and get that little curve in your back again. Relax and breathe. If you want to do anything else, sometimes lying in the back is not the most comfortable thing. If you want to get a block under the hips, at the lowest level and go for legs up against the wall. This is great. It drops your blood pressure really nicely. You can also keep your feet on the floor, go up one more level with the block and get that block super close to your tailbone so you're under the sacrum. Many of us need a little help realigning that sacrum, especially if you have low back pain. You probably need a little bit of leveling of the sacrum. So wherever you are is fine. Just breathe slowly. Relax your toes, relax your ankles, relax your calves, relax your thighs and your hips. Travel up the spine slowly and relax the spaces between the vertebra. 
and the discs in the spine. Relax your shoulders, your upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists. Palms the hands grow light. Palms the hands grow heavy. Relax the seven vertebrae of your neck. Relax your face. Smooth the lines out of your forehead and your eyelids. Relax your jaw, your lips, your tongue. Let your brain sink into the back of your skull. Relax your scalp. So I definitely invite you to stay here for another five or 10 minutes. The longer the Shavasana, the better. Keep slowing down your breath and focusing on your breath. If you do need to get up and go, take a moment and stretch out, roll around if necessary. And then you can mentally follow along as you lie on your back. If you're still in Shavasana, take a moment and recognize that whatever obstacle you feel is holding you back is actually the path forward. Bring your hands up to your forehead for kind thoughts, down to your lips for kind words, and down to your heart center for kind intentions. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.